Hi everyone, I'm going to make a video showing my Joan Jett scrapbook collection and uh, the little background here in the early months of 1982, I want to say February really, I think I first heard the song I Love Rock and Roll, which had been released at the end of 1981 and I instantly became a Joan Jett fanatic. Uh, I really loved the uh, rocking sensibility she had she really lived and breathed rock and roll you could tell and uh i began collecting everything i could on her in the rest of the 80s and into the mid 90s really that was the heyday so to speak of when i really got into joan so i'm going to show you what i have here starting out with this photo here which is basically a boardwalk records uh, promotional shot they, you know I used to just take magazine shots photos and there'll be a lot of 8 by 10 stills in here that's another one of her in action and there's the 45 rpm record sleeve but don't worry I've got a couple of them in good condition all together wouldn't cut it up otherwise and there's another one of these uh, Boardwalk Records promotional shots. And yet another in concert. And up here at the top of this page, uh, this is interesting. I remember picking these up at some kind of a show. Uh, excuse the glare and the reflection of my hand in here. Uh, this looks like a Joan herself going to some kind of a show where she seems to be going to sign something, maybe. Yeah. She's got a marker in there. And anybody who met Joan knows that she loves her fans, really appreciates them, and always tries to accommodate them. Or she did in the 80s and 90s. I haven't really had much of a chance. 2015, I kind of went to a show, and uh, she waved at everybody and said hello, but didn't sign. But otherwise, she really appreciates her following. Here's an article, Joan Jett going for broke, magazine article. Okay, there's a, an early picture of Joan Jett with the Black Hearts of the time. I think that's Eric Amble at the end, who would have be replaced by, I believe, Ricky Bird. Now, this is uh, my first ticket stub, and it's also the very first time I finally got to see Joan. And a lot of people have said they were at this show. This was the police, uh, August 18th, 1983, at Chase Stadium. It looks like a $15 ticket, maybe? Wow. Huh. Uh, times have changed. Flushing, New York, Shea Stadium. And, it, and you know, it's great because I remember the police said at the end, I want to thank the Beatles for allowing us to use their stadium, which was really fun. Uh, and, you know, the funny thing is, I'm, I was never a police fan. I really didn't like them. I mean, maybe there's like three, three or four songs I like to take. But I went there because Joan Jett and the Blackhawks were the opening band. And this would be the first of many times I'd see her. And up close, this, this time was in the stands. I was way out you know, in the bleachers or whatever. But from that point on, over a lot of shows after that, I'd wind up getting right up against the stage and leaning on the stage and banging my fist on the stage to the rock and roll and looking at the set list that was taped to the floor. And, I mean, having Joan Jett lean over in everybody's face and wave a hair in everybody's face. That's how future concerts would be. And that's exactly the, the way you want to see a rock band if you can and a little small venue is really up close like that here's a shot of her with a runaway shirt of all things Here's an advertisement. 
Joan Jett and the Blackhearts on tour now is from probably 82. And I remember this. This is a really cool uh, fanzine that came out. It said, Joan Jett and the Blackhearts fanzine includes super fold-out big color poster. Punk Star's latest hit, Brings Cops. Uh, this is just a story about how she was involved in a uh, minor accident. Um, it says here, Punk Pop Star Joan Jett is a way of drawing unwanted fast lane party crashers. At the worst of times, this time the high-wheeling 23-year-old rocker drew an uninvited driver on the Grand Central Parkway at 94th Street. He barreled into her 1983 Jaguar as she drove to a recording session Saturday afternoon. Uh, Miss Jett, who last performed here at a police concert at Chase Stadium, escaped all shook up, and after a ride in a patrol car, walked guitar in hand into the 115th precinct with manager Kenny Laguna. The busy rocker was ID'd before she presented her license and registration. Quote, it was obvious, said an officer who asked not to be identified. She had a guitar with her and the rest, black leather pants, bright red sneakers, leather jacket, face made up, hair jet black. Police said Miss Jet drove her car into one vehicle after she was struck from behind by another. Miss Jet complained of neck pains but refused medical aid after the Saturday incident, etc., etc. And uh, there's another one, Joan Jet and Crash. And here's Rocker Joan Jet Survives Crash. Now, this was the first book, and there wasn't really much in here, so I'm going to go right to the next book, which also I don't think is too large. Let's see how much we can get in one video. Uh, there's another 8x10 shot. That's a good era for her. I like that, 1984 period. Oh, this woman really rocked. Still does. Oh, this is uh, an ad about, uh, from a magazine about her video that was kind of clipped. MTV wanted this part cut out where she gave the bird a couple of times. Uh, there's... A sticker for the police concert, the police with Joan Jett and the Blackhearts. And oh yeah, REM, I should mention them, yeah. REM was also there. REM was first, Joan Jett was second, the police were third. There's a shot from the video for the everyday people single, and there's again another uh forty-five picture sleeve cutout for the everyday people sleeve. Nice picture of Joan. And there's a Rolling Stone review. It gave it three and a half stars, I assume, out of five. And this is a review of the album, Glorious Results of a Misspent Youth. And also Lita Ford's album, Dancing on the Edge. Talking about 1984 here. There's another review of Glorious Results of a Misspent Youth. The title, by the way, comes from the Honeymooners of that album, you know. Uh, she said there's a an episode where they're playing pool, Ralph Cramden and Ed Norton, and he says, stand aside and I'll show you the glorious results of a misspent youth. And Joan said that's where she got it. It's a great title for an album, really. I'm mainly just going for photos and things, unless there's anything of interest. Here's a... Uh, Card official member Joan Jett and the Blackhearts of Bad Reputation Nation fan club. And here we go. Some questions uh, on Joan. Last movie seen Gandhi. Hobbies, sports, and driving. At least like cliche. I love rock and roll. Can't you guys that are going to yell at me make up something a little more exciting? Five best places in the world America, 
meaning also Canada. Germany, England, France, but that limits it because Japan is great too, and Scandinavia, and it's also beautiful, different architectures. Favorite colors, red, black, they don't consider that a color, blue, purple, not too hot on the light colors, I like pink, etc., etc. Okay, here's uh, another stint, Capitol Theater in uh, New Jersey, from December 22nd of 1984, I remember that show too. Uh, there's another review of her album there with the cover, Glorious Results of a Misspent Youth. You need people and you need love, she says. I need all the things that everybody else needs, everybody else feels. I'm very sensitive. I cry at dumb things, you know, like I cry at the Partridge family. <laughs> so... That mean exterior, what sometimes people thought in the, you know, some of the tough rock and roll videos. Now, this is a magazine article. I'm not going to read all of them. You know, uh, Joan Jett, Facts on Tracks, where it's basically some stuff. It talks about all the songs for the new album. These are all the songs of glorious results of a misspent youth and uh, some cover songs and uh, original. Oh boy, I got a lot of, I don't know, this stuff's a little distorted here. Uh, here's some more tickets. What's this? The Beacon Theater, yes, February 15th, 1985. Uh, February 16th, 1985, 1350. I went to see Joan Jett at the Beacon Theater. And this was the first time I got really, really close because it was here that I learned that if you got to the show early enough, it doesn't matter how many seats there are. It could be the Beacon Theater or any kind of theater. All you have to do is just forget about your seat. Just run up to the stage and stand by the stage an hour before the show starts and hold your spot. Okay. Uh, now, this is when I got backstage. I got backstage once. It was at a Nassau Community College show, actually. I didn't go to Nassau Community College. I didn't. I didn't attend Nassau Community College, but that's where there was a show held, and I went there for the show. And uh, Kenny Laguna, uh, Joan Jett's manager, very nice guy, very cool guy, actually uh, met me uh, once before and said, you know, at a future show we'll let you get backstage, and he kept his promise. And that's how I got backstage, and I got a photo together with Joan, which. Uh, I, I've shown that before on my channel. I don't know if the photo is here. Uh, okay, in-store appearance. Uh, in-store appearance. First time ever in New York. Meet Joan Jett and the Blackhawks in person. February 18th. Uh, Tower Records. Remember Tower Records? Wow. And, you know, there you go. There's the LP. Five ninety nine for the LP or the cassette. This is before CDs or... CDs were out then, maybe. I think CDs were in existence. I think they came out in 83 or and 4, but they weren't commonplace for it yet. So uh, Now, it appears that I have stuff here that's not in, in the book. So I'm just going to, like, approach these here. That's uh, an, an ad for Joan Jett and the Black Arts. Hit you where you live. This is an, an ad for... Uh, her album, Up Your Alley, which uh, was a real good album and commercial for her. I think it's pretty commercial. And there's another 8x10, not in the book. There's another 8x10, not in the book. I was able to get Joan Jett's autograph several times over the years. Um, but I don't know if I have any of them in the books. I think they're all elsewhere, hanging up or somewhere else. Uh, this is uh, some. These are some photos for the movie Light of Day that Joan Jett did, uh, where she got praised really for her acting, even though the movie wasn't very good. I didn't think the movie was very good, but I thought she was impressive in there. Michael J. Fox, a co-star. You got Michael McKeon to to, to the side of Joan, who was uh, Lenny of Lenny and Squiggy. <laughs> Uh, I think Spinal Tap too, wasn't he? Um, 
another eight by ten. Another eight by ten. Now look what I just found here, which is interesting to me. Um, I have to, I never remember I had this. It's a list, and it's a list. It looks like of shows that I went to, and I have thirteen show times listed seeing Joan. Let me get a little closer here to see Shea Stadium in New York, August eighty three. I don't know what the rate the star ratings. Capitol Theater in eighty four. Uh, a little bit. Beacon Theater number three in eighty five. Beacon Theater again in 85. National Community College. That's where I, that's when I met her and got backstage. Uh, 227 85. The Cat Club in New York on in 86. Bay Street in Sag Harbor, Long Island on eight, in 86. City Gardens, Trenton, New Jersey, 87. Hofstra University in 87. The Ritz, New York, 87. And three dates on Broadway at the Lunt Fontaine Theater when she played. Concert. All these shows that I'm showing you here, I pretty much got up close right against the stage for every one of them. Um, this looks like a review. These are just uh, generic things. Let's see what we got here. Okay. I guess mostly the photos is what I got to stick with. And all these pictures here I never put into photo album. Here's a picture of Joan with Roger Daltrey. Looks like from around the 1989 area. That's when she was at doing her stint at the L'Enfantine Theater on Broadway. Rock and roll on Broadway, huh? Here's an ad here. Joan Jett up your alley. See Joan Jett at the L'Enfantine Theater in New York City, March 1st to the 5th. And I did, yes. I did. Great shows. Great shows. I know this is a picture of Joan Moore from uh, 91 when she got this really uh, short haircut. Here's a review of Joan Jet. It says, no jet lag on this flight. And it says, by Jim Farber of the Daily News. And it says, here's her album, Notorious Four Stars. I believe that album Notorious is a very good album. Here's a picture of let me see who's with Joan Jet boxes with the ex middleweight champ. I can't see it. Iran Barkley at the Lunfontaine Theater performance. Here's a picture from nineteen ninety, it says of Steven Tyler. And Joan. Here's a picture of Joan. Looks like she's at a. What is this? Rock star. And she sat intensely watching boxer. I don't know. She's watching a boxer go through the training, I think. Here's a uh, light of day. Another thing of the movie Light of Day, Michael J. Fox. You know, Light of Day uh, has not made it out to DVD that I know of yet. And uh, I'm just guessing it must be legalities problems, you know. Well, here's an article. It's kind of... Sorry for... It. Oh, man. I don't know. Sorry about this. No more rocking around the clock, this says. I don't know. It's an article. It's hard to do this. <laughs> now, here comes a bunch more ticket stubs. Ah, uh, okay. Where is this one at? This is uh, Lunt Fontaine Theater on Broadway. $25. That's for looking at the date, March 5th. I kept all the stubs. Uh, here's Lunt Fontaine Theater. March 3rd. And again, it didn't matter what my seats were. 
Because by this time I had learned that all you got to do is get yourself into the theater. Here's March 4th. And once you get into the theater, it doesn't matter where you're scheduled to sit. Just run up to the front, get there early, and you got yourself a position up right against the stage. There's uh, 1987. Yeah, this was a New Year's Eve, the Ritz. I saw her there on New Year's Eve, 1987. Uh, that's a bunch of ticket stubs. Oh, this one here, just an article. Another picture that's with Ricky Bird, the guitarist. No, that's not Ricky Bird. I'm sorry. No, it's not. It's not Ricky Bird. It's Joan Jett and the Gent. There's another photo. This is a Rolling Stone review of her album Notorious from 1991. It got a three out of five, I imagine. I don't know if they were doing four or five stars at this time. I think it's better than that. But... And there's a Sam Goody in Musicland stores on sale. You know, advertising on this. By now we have a compact disc. This is 1988, so. Six ninety nine for cassette or LP and and thirteen ninety nine for a compact disc. Okay, now we have the third and final book, and there's a nice shot of Joan from the eighty six Good Music Time. Here's a sneak peek at the movie Light of Day with her co star Michael J. Fox and Jenna Rollins. A 16 sneak review. Michael J. Fox in Light of Day. Talking about the movie. There's a nice shot. Ah, there it is. There's the picture of me and Joan. Well, this is one of the pictures of Joan. This was snapped. There were two pictures snapped. One here. This is a non-smiling shot. And there was another one that's a smiling shot, so... Uh, show you that at the end if it doesn't show up in here. If you were the good music album, looks like I should have showed this book first, probably because it looks like it was chronologically ahead of the other book. All these shots from the movie. Brother, sister, and mom. Um, baseball shot. This is a shot taken from Light of Day when she gets in a more heavy metal band during the movie, the character she plays. Now, Joan Jett was on the Howard Stern show, I think it was 1987, to promote Light of Day. And you can see there's Joan over there, a bad newspaper shot, and Ricky Bird, the guitarist. And over here we have Howard Stern and Robin Quivers. And Robin Quivers laughing as usual like Ed McMahon. And here's a couple of advertisements for the movie Light of Day. Michael J. Fox figured prominently on the poster. I actually have the poster of this. The full one-sheet poster in color. I don't really use it much hanging up or anything because it's all really mostly Michael J. Fox. And the movie, I got to agree with this. It says, Fox and Jet shine in a bleak light of day. And it got two and a half stars out of four. Um, although, I must say that Robert uh, Roger Ebert gave it, I think he gave it a three and a half or four star review. And here it is. I was really shocked. Uh, Roger Ebert over here says... Average neurotic family shines in light of day. 
Light of day, three and a half out of four stars. Um, he praised uh, Joan Jett's performance in the movie. Uh, and here's another one. A long day's journey into Cleveland Heights. Two stars. Uh, you know, so it's unfortunate, but... And there we have another promotional shot. Another shot from the movie with Jenna Rollins and Michael J. Fox. Here's a shot from the movie with the director here, Paul Schrader, um, talking the scene out with uh, Joan and Michael. Here's a... Shot from the movie with the little boy who was supposed to be Joan's son in the movie. And Michael J. Fox with the kid. Billy Sullivan, I should say, is the actor. Another shot from Light of Day, but for those who still haven't seen it, I'm going to show the photo of uh, Joan and myself. There's the photo when I got backstage and I'm wearing the backstage pass that I showed earlier. Joan and myself. 1985. Thank you, everybody, for watching, and rock on.